In this video, I am going to explain how to create the Graphica user interface in TR portal. Okay, this is the Graphica user interface we are going to create. Here you can see the start button, the stop button and the indicator light. Once we press the start button, you can see its color change. It indicates the input has taken. Then according to the program, you can see the output is given that is indicated by the indicator light. Once you press the stop button, you can see its color change and then you can see the indicator light switch off. Okay, this is the graphical user interface we are going to create using the TR portal. Okay, let's open the TR portal. Here I am using the TR portal version 20. Okay, this is the opening window for the TR portal. Here I am going to create the new project. So create a new project. Here I am going to give name as uh, HMI. Uh, then enter. As the first step, we have to configure the devices. So we are going to insert the PLC and the HMI to our project. So I click add new device. As the controller, I am going to select CPU 1215 type PLC. Let's take the 1215 C type PLC. Okay. This is the PLC I am going to select. The version 4.7. The the PLC, you can see the short uh, description of the PLC. Okay, then click add. Okay, initially it asked to set the security settings, PLC security settings. So first one, the protection of the confidential PLC data. So you can give a custom password to protect the configured data of the PLC. For this project, I'm not going to give any password. So I'm going to uncheck this one. Okay, then uh, mode for PG, PC and HMI communication, here you can see they only allow a secure PG, PC and HMI communication. So I am going to uncheck this one, communication performance might be higher when only legacy PG, PC communication is uh, used. So uh, I am going to uncheck this one. So the PLC access protection, the next one. So I am going to disable the access uh, control so anyone can access the PLC. So for this project, we don't want the access control. So, so then anyone can access the PLC. Okay, that's all. So nothing to uh, set uh, in these options. Okay, the finish. Click finish. Okay, this is the selected PLC. You can see this is the selected PLC. Then in here you can see if you want to expand the input output. Uh, number of input output you can connect the expansion modules in here in here you can see you can connect the power supply and uh, communication uh, modules in here then uh, here you can see the uh, PLC is selected and uh, you can see the properties of the PLC here you can see the properties of the PLC then the here you can see all the input output uh, belongs to this PLC you can see uh, analog inputs, analog outputs, uh, and you can see the digital inputs and digital output and their addresses you can see under the input output tag tags. Okay. Okay, then next we are going to add the HMI device. Okay. Click add new device. Then select the HMI. So I'm going to select the middle range HMI device. So uh, comfort panel I'm going to select. 7 inch comfort panel. Let's take the TP700 comfort panel. Okay, here this is the one I'm going to select the yeah, version uh, newest version. Let's take the version uh, 17. This is the HMI device I'm going to select. Okay, click OK. Okay, in initially it asked to uh, configure the HMI device. Uh, you can see uh, first one the PAC connection. Uh, Oh, you can uh, later you can uh, create this uh, configuration. So anyhow, uh, PLC connection I'm going to uh, done uh, at here. Uh, okay, you can see the HMI device. Here we have to select the PLC that we already added. So click here to select the PLC then double click. So then uh, PLC, the connection has uh, developed in between these two HMI and the PLC. Okay, finish, uh, click finish. Uh, the screen layout and other things uh, we can later we can uh, configure okay click uh, finish okay uh, here you can see hmi device uh, we had add, added uh, to the project 
okay let's uh, delete this one we don't want this one yeah okay later we can configure this uh, screen uh, first uh, let's go to the device and networks uh, here you can see the connection developed in between the PAC and the HMI once you click in here you can see under its uh, properties you can see the click here and you can under the properties you can see the ethernet address used the PAC ethernet address you can see and you can see the HMI device address this is HMI device address device number and the subnet number you can see yeah. well, let's uh, develop a simple level logic program let's go to the main program block here yeah, I'm going to create the simple uh, latch circuit so I'm going to insert the normally open contact in here you can see a few uh, instructions are listed in here here you can see the basic instruction are listed in here here I'm going to create the simple latch circuit Okay, for this one, I'm going to give you as uh, M0.0 memory address. Here we are going to communicate this uh, digital signal using the memory bits. So I'm going to use the M0.0 in here. Okay, let's uh, rename this tag as uh, start. Start, change. Here this is the stop button. M0.1, uh, enter. Let's uh, rename this tag as uh, stop, stop, enter, change. Let's uh, take the output from the physically available output of the output of the PLC. Under the local modules, you can see PLC. And uh, under the input outputs, you can see all the input outputs are listed in here. You can see. You can simply drag and drop any of the address here let's take uh, we want to give output uh, through q0.1 let's take simply select this one and drag it over here let's uh, rename this output as bulb bulb change okay for this one also you all know this uh, for this latch circuit for this one also we have to give a q0.1 here select it from the tag table click here then select the bulb enter this is the ladder logic circuit where we created okay, let's compile this one okay uh, zero errors and zero warnings uh, so then go ahead to develop the HMI screen okay here the HMI device you can see then expand this one the root screen so I'm going to create the graphical user interface on a uh, root screen okay this is the button uh, we can use this button to give uh, digital signals okay uh, drag and drop it in here i'm going to change the size like this you can change the size like this let's uh, rename the text start let's go to the properties of the button here the properties so I'm going to change the appearance. First of all, I'm going to change the appearance. Uh, let's take the solid uh, fill and the corner radius. I'm going to increase the corner radius a little bit. And uh, width of the border lines, I'm going to increase. And also the so color, I'm going to change uh, this kind of color. And uh, it's uh, the background color, I'm going to change this kind of color. So then I'm going to change its uh, text color to uh, this kind of color. Okay, so I'm going to increase the font size. Uh, let's go to the text format. So I'm going to uh, change the font size. Uh, you can select uh, any of the font font uh, sizes also. Let's take the 25. Yeah, that's better. Okay, this is my start button. Let's uh, slightly increase. Okay, okay. so then <coughs> we want to create the stop button as well. So Simply uh, select this one, Control C, hit Control C, and Control V, hit Control V. You can see button has uh, created. Just uh, we want to uh, uh, rename the this button. So let's rename this button as Stop.
desktop that's all okay so then i'm going to insert the indi indicator light as well so from the basic objects the other one you have to select circle okay let's uh, go to the properties of this uh, circle its appearance uh, i'm going to change yeah. without trigger situation the other color okay and uh, let's increase the borderline little bit and also the borderline uh, uh, color i'm going to change uh, to this kind of color okay okay now it's okay okay then again let's uh, click on the start button then go to the events okay when the start button is uh, press when the start button is press what is the function we need so click here add function to add the function so expand this one so we would we would change the uh, state of the bit expand this one here select this one set bit while the key is press when the button is press we are we asked to set the bit select this one so then which bit Select, uh, you have selected from this uh, in here click here to select the relevant bit start bit select it from the PSC tag table default tag table go to the default tag table and select it from this start click ok that's all when the button is pressed you can see the it changed the state of the start uh, bit m0.0 ok then let's go to the animation uh, when the key is pressed we want to change the color of the we want to change the appearance so when the start button is pressed select the relevant tag in here select this one okay so then the range for this uh, boolean type input range is uh, 0 to 1 click here m0.0 start bit in zero condition it's a background color is this one if uh, it state is changed to a one so what is the color so add new click here then we have to change its color to uh, let's take uh, this kind of color okay yes okay then go to stop for the stop button go to first go to the events uh, when the stop button is pressed what is the function we need we want to edit the bit so i am selecting set bit while the key is pressed when the when the stop button is pressed we are going to set the uh, bit so which bit so we have to select it from the tag here stop bit select this one from the pc tag table and click here that's all okay then uh, let's go to the animation so then appearance so when the signal reaches uh, from the stop we have to change the color of the button so go to the appearance so the relevant tag we have to select from the tag click here the stop button when the stop button is pressed we want to change the color so click here the range when the stop button is in zero condition the the color click here when the stop button is one so we want to change its color to uh, this kind of color okay that's all okay then uh, click on the indicator light then go to the properties the q0.0 bit is set so we are going to indicate using this indicator light we are going to create the simple animation so go to the animation we are going to change the appearance of this indicator light when the output is given through the bulb select the relevant tag put the tick mark we are going to change its appearance from uh, this color to when the bit is uh, at the state one so we are going to represent it using uh, this kind of color let's take uh, this kind of color okay you can see the flashing if you want uh, we can flash the indicator light so yes uh, let's see okay okay that's all but then uh, let's uh, compile the program 
then you can see zero errors and zero warning okay then uh, we are going to simulate the program so first uh, let's go to the main program click uh, start simulation click ok it will open the PEC sim software it create the s7 1200 instance so let's uh, minimize this one yeah the connection has developed so then we are going to load the configured data connect so then uh, load click load then uh, we asked to start the module start module finish okay then uh, click uh, monitoring on off okay this is the program you can see at initially there is no power flow to the bulb here uh, both are normally open uh, in here okay let's go to the screen as well okay the, the screen so click uh, start simulation it will open the WinCC software okay the, the screen okay, let's open the main program as well let's uh, float the screen then you can see both the screen and the HMI screen okay here you can see the program and the, here you can see the uh, developer uh, HMI screen okay once you press the start button you can see its color change and the power flow develop to the bulb if you release the when the start button is released you can see the power flow, power flow continue because the optional path is uh, created in here here you can see the indicator light flashing and it represents there's a power flow to the bulb once you press the stop button you can see the power flow disconnected when the stop button is pressed the power flow disconnected here i'm power flow disconnected here you can see again when the start button is pressed the power flow develop to the bulb when the stop button is pressed you can see the power flow disconnected because this is the normally close contact m0.1 goes high this will open you can see power flow disconnected I think uh, you all got clear idea how to develop the graphical user interface in a uh, tier portal. Okay, thank you. See you next video.